Ironman Wales 2022 race day video. Yeah, Ironman Wales was the first ever Ironman I took part in in 2019 as an amateur. That day was really, really good. I managed to come away with Kona qualification in the 25 to 29 age group. I meant to go to Kona in 2020, uh, 2020. Obviously, that never happened. World pandemic, that sort of thing. But in the meantime, turned professional. And when they announced that Wales was going to be a pro race for the men, I, yeah, I basically just had to be there. So, yeah. Going into the race day, I've basically done a really good block of training for like the last 10 weeks. Really specific to Ironman, lots of like intensity on the bike, lots of duration on the bike. Felt really super strong, super fit coming into the day. And I basically just wanted to give it my best. Like 10 be such a special place for anyone uh, who races Ironman, but especially if you're from South Wales, it's like, it's probably just the mecca, you know, like the race day, the atmosphere, even like the couple of days leading into it, it's just... It's just insane. The whole, the whole atmosphere is insane. Yeah, so coming into race day felt really, really good. Normal sort of stuff, going into race day, get the bike checked over, get the body checked over, tick off those last sort of few workouts, and then, yeah, we, we were into it. It's always nice when there's strong pro field, so as soon as, like, Joe Skipper's on the start list, Boris Stein, and then Will Menison, there was Arthur Hossu, and just a list of, like, loads of French athletes as well, a couple of Spanish, Harry Palmer, Finn from the UK as well, like, you just know, instantly know it's going to be a like a good strong solid uh, solid race so i just keep want to keep sort of challenging myself i kind of have aspirations of you know the level i want to be at and where i want to get to in sport and every time i get the opportunity to basically race some of these guys you know i try and jump at it to kind of see where you level uh, where your level is at at the moment so yeah race day woke up nice and early i think i was up at like 4 a.m smashed loads of porridge took on some just simple brioche tried to get fluids down me and then into Ten B for uh, five AM to get into the bikes, get everything set up, and then down to the beach for the pros were starting at six fifty five. Yeah, it was super special. We had the see the the Queen passed away on Thursday, so we had a bit of a, a silent period. I think it was about a minute silence for for her, followed by the British national anthem, and then followed by the traditional Welsh national anthem. So uh, anyone who was standing there on the beach or just spectating, like I had goosebumps. It's just such like a hairs on end kind of moment for everyone. So, but yeah, even made it even more special um, because of that. The sea, the sea was, uh, it looked ridiculous, like choppy, swell. You just didn't, it just looked un basically unpredictable. Uh, the boys just didn't look in a straight line. Spoke to the race director just before, race official, sorry. And he said they'd just been out to measure the course and it was bang on 3.8 kilometers. So yeah, we were basically running into uh, something that I think a lot of people would find quite scary. Yeah, for me, coming from a swimming background, I was really excited for that because I kind of felt like it would give me the upper hand on some of the other swimmers. So yeah, I ran in. I kind of wanted to get the upper hand straight away. So uh, head down for the first sort of seven or eight strokes. Then just basically just try to navigate through the chop um, and just try and get a lead. Managed to establish that pretty pretty well. Came out after the first lap with like almost like a minute and a half, two minutes lead. I had a quick look over my shoulder to see what, what was happening behind. Uh, and then straight in for the second lap, which was absolute carnage with all the uh, amateurs on the first lap. But yeah, again, tried to navigate through that. And then as I came out of the water, it was quite clustered. And I kind of tapped a few people on the shoulder and tried to sort of sneak past. And as I did that, I was kind of undoing my wetsuit at the same time. And yeah, rolled, stacked myself, and I literally got like face, chest full of sand on the beach in Tenby. But yeah, obviously jumped up and, and legged it as quick as I could anyway. But yeah, I think I had about a four minute lead over Harry, uh, Harry Palmer, and then about a five minute lead over to uh, Joe Skipper and a couple of other athletes. So yeah, really, really happy with the swim. Four, uh, 44, 30 ish. Feel like we had a decent, like, even though the, the sea conditions are super choppy. I feel like we had good currents in the sense that it was actually pretty fast in terms of the, like swimming 44 minutes for 3.8 kilometers is, is a good time for me. And I feel like overall speaking to a lot of am amateurs and also the other professionals, everyone on, on the whole thought, like, thought the swim was pretty quick, even though it was like super tough while they were in there. Legged it through transition. And when I say through transition, I mean like the 1.2 kilometer run up through Tenby Town, which is always insane. So massive, like thanks to everyone who was screaming for me. I literally always just like, you just forget what you're doing. And you just like kind of start running way too quick. Yeah, there's nothing better than that atmosphere. So I just kind of go with it and just super enjoyable. Hopped on my bike and basically I had a game plan of, you know, riding strong, steady, basically what I felt like I could sustain for the whole ride. 
I wanted to set off at that pace. I wanted to hold it nice and strong. And if af- if if athletes caught me, the then the decision was then: do I go with the push, uh, or do I do my own thing? Which fortunately never actually came came to fruition. As um, I think Skipper started to make a little bit of ground on to me, uh, ground up on me, and then he actually managed. He actually had then a mechanical. So then I was being greatly followed by uh, Boris Stein in the end from Germany. I think I closed about. I think he closed about three and a half minutes, and I pulled another like twenty thirty seconds going into T two. But I held that gap quite nicely and. He's cut sort of known for his bike pedigree. So yeah, that's super, super promising that, you know, I stuck to my numbers. I rode the bike to the best of my abilities. Felt like I made some good tactical decisions around bends, uh, rode the, ro- rode the roads really, really well. So I overall really, really happy with how that went. Led onto the run. And yeah, I guess what I didn't mention is the first two minutes on the bike as you go down the hill past Sainsbury's, hit a little bump and my front bottle just went ping. Really annoying, I had bands on it and everything. Um, that basically included 100, I think it was 140 grams of carbohydrate along with 1500 mil, uh, milligrams of sodium, um, which is, you know, kind of my fueling for like an hour and a half on the bike. So as soon as I lost that, I was kind of like, knew I was going to be a little bit low on fuel. So I basically had to try and compensate and there's no real electrolytes on course. So I was basically thinking more about the calories and the carbs. So Gatorade was kind of the only option. So I kind of guzzled a lot of uh, Gatorade and I just, it doesn't suit me. Like in terms of like, uh, again, it's uh, for some people it, it might work. But for me, it just made me feel like very sick. Uh, I actually felt quite acidic in the throat. It felt like I almost had a sore throat at one point, which was like super weird. And then I feel like that came back to bite me a little bit on the run because I bike. I feel like I bike. I rode sort of almost what exactly what I wanted to do. But yeah, got onto the marathon, had three minute 40, three, something like that to Boris Stein. Started running to the best of my ability. My lower back was so sore. And I think that's because of how choppy it was in the swim. Like it was definitely a lot more sighting than normal. So I was lifting up a lot more to like kind of see the boys. So for the first like half lap, my back was super, super tight. But that kind of eased up and I was kind of running like, don't get me wrong, I was running okay, but I wasn't running, like, to the level that I had trained for, the level I know I can run at, and I feel like nutrition definitely played an effect on that, like, going into the run, I was definitely slightly under fueled and definitely slightly under sodium fueled, and then that's kind of where uh, Boris started to catch me gradually, and then started about 16, 17k, just getting some intense cramps along the like inside of my quad, like in the groin sort of area, which kind of caused me to, you know, stop a few times, limp a few times, um, and which is really like, it's really frustrating when you're like in the lead of the race um, with the lead bike, and you like you're reduced to a like a hobble or a walk for a, for a few steps. Um, but I kind of managed. Yeah, so I just basically tried to take on as much nutrition as I could. The annoying thing is I didn't have any extra sodium on me, which is something I'm going to change in the future. Always have some backup sodium. Yeah, so I took on as much fuel as I could in the A stations. I was kind of just doing the best I could in terms of like running, walking a little bit at the A stations, getting as much sort of fluid as I could uh, could get in, which then actually came back to bite me again because by the, th- the sort of midway through the third lap, I needed the portal. <laughs> um, which again, yeah. It, it is what it is, it's kind of going south. Uh, I lost the lead to Boris. Uh, Skipper flew past me on an absolute rampage on that run. And then I actually lost third place while I was in the port loop. Yeah, held strong on the fourth lap. Fourth place finisher, who was running super strong, came past me. And then I knew the gap to sixth, who was the guy behind me, was about four to five minutes. So I just basically ran as strong as I could all the way through town to the finish line. And yeah, actually, before the race, my goal was to try and finish around nine hours. So I thought, you know, if I finish around nine hours, that should be good enough for, you know, to get me in the mix. And in the mix, to in my head, was kind of top five. So I kind of surpassed that expectation by going under nine hours. Uh, in previous years, you know, 8.58 would have got you in the podium at Ironman Wales. Like, no, no questions about it. That's like... Some years is, that would be good enough to win it. Other years that would have got you second. So it just shows how, like, I guess, obviously how good Skipper is for, for winning it and running that fast, but also just how good the depth of male, well, male and female uh, Ironman Pro Triathlon is at the moment. And it's just getting better and better every year, which just means that I need to uh, keep getting better and better. But yeah, super, some really big takeaways. I know that I'm, obviously, I feel like I belong in the pro race, which is really, really nice, really, really nice feeling to 
to feel like you belong there. I definitely know that I'm not a bad runner. I just ran badly in that race as well. You know, I think combination of, you know, potentially riding, you know, five to 10 watts, the margins are so small, but five to 10 watts too hard, or, you know, do I need to condition the body more? Can I get the nutrition right? You know, all these like little things uh, factor into, you know, actually being able to put down the run that you should be able to do at the end of the bike. And I'm hoping that in the next, you know, few races, uh, hopefully I can express basically the, the run pedigree that I feel like I have and the training I have put into the run as well. So yeah, the, the next the next big goal is I'm going to get one more Ironman in this year and hopefully that will be Ironman Arizona at the end of November, which is super, super exciting. I've tried to go to the States once for an Ironman, well, I've tried to go to the States twice for an Ironman, uh, California last year, which got cancelled when I was there, and then uh, Texas at the beginning of this year when I got COVID the week before. So third time's the charm. Um, hopefully I will be able to get to the start line there, fit, healthy, and you know ready to lay it down. And I'm not ever afraid of put myself out there in a race. Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who uh, supported me, cheered for me on course. Uh, that's athletes and spectators uh, on the second loop on the bike and on the run. So many of you wishing me well and kind of keeping me going. So thank you so much for uh, everyone on course. I hope that everyone who was racing got the result they wanted, the time they wanted, the, the Kona slots they wanted. It's such a special race, I'm in Wales. And I think even if you didn't quite hit that target, hopefully you just enjoyed the whole experience um, as much as I did. Yeah, it's such a such a special race and it's one that I'll definitely back, be back to, to do again. Super hard, super honest and yeah, it just blows my mind every time the the kind of uh, triathlon community we have and and how and how big that kind of um, that draw is to 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 Tenby. So yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's a lot about me rambling, um, but um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy some of the content, some of the insight I give, and uh, you feel like you're uh, involved in this journey, which it definitely feels like a journey, and I feel like I hopefully I'm um, progressing on that so yeah once again thanks everyone and I'll uh, I'll see you soon